everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. As you might be able to tell from the outfit that I'm wearing, I am starting off exactly where I left off in last week's video. Kind of. Because I'm actually filming this intro about 24 hours after I started the project for this week's video. Because I thought I was going to finish it last week and if you've seen last week's video you'll know that I didn't. So this week I am determined we are finishing the 1890s Summer Ensemble. And the first thing that you're going to see here is the belt. So I started working on the belt yesterday, so let's go ahead and cut to yesterday's Rebecca to show you what I was doing on the belt. All that needs doing at this point are cuffs and the belt. I do still want to cut off the excess down here at the hem because I just don't want this much bulk down there since it's all gonna get tucked into the skirt and particularly the shirt front is very, very bulky. So I would probably shorten it. If all else fails, I can, I mean, I can take pictures without it being shortened, like that's not a big deal. And I could also just bind it off and finish it where it is. Again, not a big deal. So those are two options because this gets tucked in and I don't care what happens below the waist. So, as I mentioned, cuffs and belt, that's all that has to happen. Both of those are out of velvet. The cuffs are just going to be straight bands, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I do have to hem this first, but what I'm going to do, I checked one of my extants, my pink velvet one that I showed you several months ago, which I will link up above right here if you had not seen that examining video. But I checked that one and they fully finished the sleeve of the bodice just by itself. And then they just have a velvet cuff that is made up, slapped on top of that, whip stitched together at the hem. Actually, the funny thing about that one is that the sleeve itself apparently wound up a little bit too tight. So underneath the cuff, the sleeve is split open a little bit and the cuff is just covering up all of that split. So my sleeves fit, they just need that little bit of a hem and then that cuff will get made out of the velvet. I'm probably not even gonna mock it up. I mean, knock on wood, <laughs> I want it to work out, but it should, again, just be straight band of the velvet with probably one layer of stabilizer of some sort, because I am out of a fusible that I'd like to use on the velvet, and then uh, probably the twill on the inner will be, that will be it for the cuff. The belt I have mocked up, so I've mocked it up out of canvas. I've yet to actually try it on, but I figure I wanna put the skirt on before I try it on, but I like the shape of it. So we'll see how that goes once I put the skirt on. It is large enough, it overlaps in the back, maybe even too much of an overlap, so that seems like a good sign. I wasn't sure what was going on on the side, so I will have to look at that a little bit closer. And again, I have to actually put it on over the skirt so that I know just how much it needs to go around since the skirts and petticoats and bum pad and everything that's going to add more bulk. So that will be in a minute. I'll show you what that looks like once I have the skirts on. But this is my mock-up just out of canvas and the actual will probably be, I'm thinking maybe a canvas interior and the velvet and the twill on the back. I'm not positive yet but something like that. I don't want it to be too thick because then it would make my waist look thick, but obviously it needs to be stiff enough to stand up on its own. And the canvas, just one layer of canvas is actually doing a semi-decent job of that. So I have work to do. I'm gonna go see if I can finish all of that by tonight. So excellent news on the waist belt front. It fits, it works. I think I mentioned this already. I don't remember if it was this video or a prior video, but I did make a few changes to the pattern for the belt. So I extended the tops of the belt, both front and back, by half an inch to make it half an inch taller upwards. I also extended the point just curving down here. I believe I went to about three eighths inches longer at the point, and I started that curve right about here on the pattern, just curving down a little bit there. I also went and I cut or I used the size one larger than my waist for the front and for the back I used the size one smaller than my waist because I just felt like the back was proportionately way too long and that was exactly what I should have done because now the side seam is right exactly here. 
One other comment though about the side seam is that if you look at this pattern piece, it's literally just curving upwards the whole way. However, this top bit and bottom bit, those are seam allowance. And so by curving those upwards here, which this is the problem that I'm having, the one problem, by curving them upwards and outwards, even your seam allowance is getting bigger. You don't want that. You would want that to either be straight or to curve back the other way, which that can get complicated. So I would just go with straight because right now my seam allowance is bubbling basically within the waist because there is extra fabric there than there is here where the top is because I had just gone and I folded over all of the seam allowances just so that I could get the look of the actual belt when I went to put it on. So this, let me just show you. So this looks like this on this side, but on this side currently, since it's just my mock-up, has all the seam allowances folded in. So anyway, it looks like that's gonna work though. I just need to tweak what's going on with those edges here where it meets, because this is what I'm talking about where there's like too much right there in the seam allowances. So I just need to tweak the shaping of that. But otherwise, like the shape of the curve of the waist is actually pretty much perfect. So that's great. I think I can go ahead and just use this as the interior. I'm almost tempted to like use this as the back and then have some sort of a fusible as the interior. I wish I had more of the hair canvas because I really dislike regular fusible interfacings, the stuff that's like all really soft and then it fuses, but then it always seems to come off. So I don't wanna mess with that, but this velvet is so slippery and slick. That's hard to say. And I know that it's going to be a pain in the butt without something fused to the back. <sighs> so, not sure what to do there because I don't have any more and I don't think Joann's sells that. But we'll figure it out. I'm going to go ahead and cut whatever I do wind up using and I'll tell you about it later. I'm going to cut those layers and I'm also going to cut my cuff layers there, which the cuff, this is not part of the black snail pattern. So I'm just going to make my cuff about probably that thick. I don't even know what that is. Probably about three and a half inches, something like that. I'm gonna make them that wide and those are also gonna be out of the purple velvet. So I've been working long on the waist cincher belt thing and it is like ready to be sewn together by hand because I learned from the collar that this velvet is kind of a nightmare. Basically what's going on here is that I have the blue that was my mock-up. I have that on the inside. I used each of those pieces to cut a piece of fusible interfacing because I don't have anything better to cut a piece of fusible interfacing then put the interfacing on the velvet with the velvet side down obviously and ironed it on and then cut out the velvet piece so that the velvet wouldn't squidge when I tried to cut it and that worked really well that meant that I got the pieces that were the exact shape as the canvas pieces but I don't know if it is that the interfacing is already separating because that's what it does or if it's just that this velvet is weird but I feel like it's making weird wrinkles when I put it on particularly in the very center front and obviously it wasn't doing that when it was just canvas because it didn't have all of those other issues. So I think there's like a couple things that are causing it. Again, the interfacing separating probably, just the velvet being its own thing. And then also just the fact that I have a curve here and this is straight. There is no seam to create a curve. So like it wants to go in in the center, but obviously it can't go in at the top and the bottom. So I think what I'm going to experiment with is I think I'm going to put a boning channel, a little piece of boning right in the center front right there. I think that that will help get off my velvet. Dora decided she wants to sit on the silk velvet. Hi, Dora. Dora would like to say hi. Okay, there's Dora. I'm wearing all white, so I'm putting you down. Anyway, so I think what will help is to put one little piece of just some synthetic whalebone boning right in that little center. I think that will help to kind of keep it a little bit stiffer there. I 
think it's the only piece that I need. And then once I have that in, uh, what I'm going to do is hand sew all along the edges here. So the velvet is always a little bit larger than the canvas and I can just stitch the canvas to the velvet all the way around and that should be good. I will probably honestly put the boning channel in by hand at this point too because it's already pinned on. I don't really want to unpin everything. I don't know. I'll think about that. But in the meantime, I'm going to go get out of all this that I've been wearing for the last hour and a half and go give Lion a walk. I will come back to this afterwards. So I've been working away on the velvet belt, but as you all know, if you've seen my videos before, I am in fact the world's slowest hand sewer. So that is going very slowly, but it is happening. I hope to finish it today. But in the meantime, I'm going to give myself a break and I want to work on the hat. Now I am running very low on base hats, particularly hats that would work for summer. I have a few wool bases and I have like one dark colored straw, but I really only have one light colored straw base left that could potentially work and that is this crafty hat right here. It is luckily 100% straw, it's not like fake straw or anything, so I'm hoping that I can steam this into the shape that I want. I mean, I'm going for a relatively basic hat. The one thing that I'm kind of wondering about with this is if it's going to actually be a little bit too big, but I want to get the crown shape first and then I'll decide on the brim afterwards. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and flatten this as much as possible. I want this to be shorter and flat on top instead of domed. I think that if I can get it down to about even like this tall that that should be fine. So I should be able to just cover this in steam because that's really how that works when you are going to reshape a hat. You steam the heck out of it and then you like put it either around things if you're making the shape go upwardly different like if I was going to make a flat hat round I would put it on something round or for my case I should be able to just steam the crap out of it and then like put a heavy object on it and make it flat. We're gonna try that. It is honestly quite simple. I just use my iron. I suppose you could use like a steamer as well, but I just use my iron, blast it with a bunch of steam until it is damp really is the goal. And then I'll put like, I'll probably put something to protect the books, but I'll probably put books on top of it to just get it nice and flat and a little bit lower. Um, and then I will figure out the brim and the decorations. Part of the reason why I'm not too worried about the crown is because my inspiration hat has kind of a poof on top. So I'm kind of thinking that I might use maybe some silk organza to just kind of like make poofs and put that on top and maybe put some feathers. I wish I had white feathers. I don't. I think I do maybe have some purple feathers though. So that will probably work and I'll just like hot glue everything cause that's what I do. <laughs> I probably will actually wind up needing to put something underneath because right now I'm getting this concave dome, which I, I mean, I can hide that with the organza, but I really don't want that. So I'm going to need to just kind of work this and squeeze this upwards and make it flat on top instead. So now I have to figure out what to put under it. I've located a flat object of the right height. It's actually just a little box where like notepads and stuff go into. So now I'm going to steam this again because it kind of dried. Do a few from the inside too. And then I'm going to set it on that and hopefully hold it in place a little bit until I get kind of that ridge going on. Unfortunately, some of the straw is wanting to kind of crack a little in here, which, you know, was not what I wanted to have happen. That looks like just about the right shape. So let's just start by doing that. And then we're going to replace that with the Kyoto Fashion Book, which should give me a nice flat top. All right, I'll be back later to check on how that goes. So that shaping method wound up working perfectly for this hat, and I have found a very interesting and creative way to decorate it. 
it's not actually done yet. It's just pinned on, but oh my God, I love it. So all this is, is cotton organdy. It's that super, super like papery, poor quality cotton organdy that I wound up using for my plaid 1830s dress several months ago. And I just ripped a strip off of it. And this stuff is so crinkly and crumply that this is literally just me going like this and then sticking there are five pins in this i obviously one strip wasn't enough for the whole hat but yeah i just have to figure out a few points to like tack glue on and the rest of it is so crinkly that it is staying by itself and look at that nice flat top i got i know you can't really see it from the decorated sides but look at that it seemed out perfectly the kyoto fashion book was the perfect weight apparently to smush the top of that hat down and actually the brim seems to be doing fine i want like basically as flat of a brim as I can just to show you kind of an example of some hats from this period. I'm talking things like this one right up here. I think that's a really good example of just like super flat and then floof all on top. So I have not yet figured out what other things I might want to add besides this organdy. I've been playing with some feathers and one of the ideas that I had was to do something kind of like this, where it's like going across. I don't know if I love it. I feel like that starts to take this hat into Edwardian territory, but obviously looking at some of the hats in that accessories book, and this is the page that I was on was from 1897, which is pretty much exactly when I'm going for here. I think this is like an 1896, 1897-ish look. And so those hats still are quite large. And I mean, looking at all of the hats on these two pages for 96 and 97, again, they're, they're pretty large and decorated. So I'm not far off from this. It definitely needs something, whether that's feathers or maybe like ribbon loop bows. I just don't think I have any ribbon to match the velvet, which is what I would want to do. So that's why I was thinking of the feathers. So I have to play around with the feathers for sure more, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing this down in some spots just so that it can keep that crinkled shape. I'll get a little bit more of it for this side over here. And uh, that's about it. That's all I need to do for decorating this hat. So super simple hat project. It's done. This was honestly like one of the easiest hats ever, which has been just fantastic. As I mentioned where I had it just kind of like pinned, I just put a bunch of little glue dots on. So this is not even that glued on all of this organdy. It is just like, there's like a spot here and a spot here, here, here. Like every few, every couple inches, there's a spot. Every time that a, a fold was kind of going into the hat, there is a spot of glue, but it's like literally just just a little like finger press spot and that's it. The rest of it is just holding because this is not good quality organdy and it's not supposed to do that, but it works for this hat. And then I decided that it needed feathers. I wanted to incorporate a little bit of the purple since I had purple feathers and I didn't really have that many white feathers. I've got some wonderfully huge white feathers that my friend Emily gave me, but they were just gonna be way too big for this hat. These are even bordering on a little too big. Like we're starting to tread into a couple years later territory, I feel like with this hat, but I think it'll still work for 1897-ish. And so what I have here is I've got two feathers that are going across this way a white one and a very pale pink one behind it and I've sewn them in there's kind of a gap two gaps actually in the organdy where I had to take two strips and put them on so one of the gaps happens to be right here where these feathers go in so I have put the feathers inside the gap there and sewn them in just with regular needle and thread and then these feathers, I don't know if you can really see this or not, but you see how there's kind of little like kinks in it. That is done by literally just gently pushing your fingernail into the feather just to help it bend a little bit. So that's what was going on here. I did a couple of them over here, a couple of them over here on both of those feathers. Then I've got purple feathers that have some little fuzzies on them that I need to take off. But I've got purple feathers that I bought this huge thing of purple feathers ages ago, like 2011, I want to say, on eBay that was like someone's wedding decorations. And it was like, 
I don't know, a hundred feathers or something like that. So I still have some of them left. That's what these are. All of them were like slightly damaged because they were all used for a wedding. And I put them, two of them together, and these I just kind of tucked inside the, in like along the crown inside the organdy and I've again sewn those with needle and thread and then over here I had two of these left I got these I think at Michael's or Joann's ages and ages ago and I had like a bunch of them they were on clearance and these are my last ones but I thought that they did a pretty good job of bringing in some more of the deeper purple to the hat and also more texture because they've got these funny little like I don't know what is that like rooster or something feathers and so these they're put into little like bouquet wrapped with floral tape, that green floral tape, and they're on wires at the bottom. So I was trying to figure out how to hide all of that. And I actually wound up taking just a little scrap strip of the Swiss dot, tying it around the green, literally like tying it a couple knots. And then it was all, both little stems of these were all wrapped up in that white. And then I actually just took hot glue because now I'm not gluing the feathers, I'm gluing the white cotton. And I took hot glue and I glued the white cotton little holder to the white organdy. So that's all in. I don't like gluing feathers if I can avoid it because you never know when you're going to need to like take tall feathers off a hat for transit or something like that. So I do prefer to sew in feathers, but I will glue anything else on a hat because it's just easier. And honestly, I've never like, sorry, I have once redecorated a hat and that hat had hot glue on it and it was fine to redecorate it anyway. So yeah, I am a hot glue hat person all the way, but my hat is now done, which means I have no more excuses and I have to go back to sewing on the velvet. So I'm gonna go do more hand sewing. I will touch base with you when I move onto the cuffs as opposed to the belt or when the belt is finished, one of those. So I have started on the cuffs for the bodice and I am totally winging it here, but basically, I was going to cut a strip of fabric of the velvet that was going to be 3.75 inches by 10.5 inches. And to do that, I took my last tiny little bit of fusible horsehair and I cut the strip of that first and then I fused it to the velvet. But then it dawned on me that that would just make an extra seam. Why am I going to do velvet on one side and twill on the other side when you could probably see inside the cuff and that would just be like weird, it was a bad idea. So I decided to just do it as a square and it's just dawning on me that I hope that this isn't a bad idea because I really should have done it as slightly a trapezoid shape so that it goes out a little bit further as it gets bigger of my arm and I didn't do that so this might not work at all which sucks because it was my very last piece of fusible. So as I mentioned, I only had tiny bits of fusible left. I had enough for two strips like this. That was it. So this is sew-in on this side, the horsehair, and I pinned it in place and then I surged around all of the outside. Now I'm going to take all the pins out, fold it over right sides together, seam these seams, short end seams up on the machine, turn it right sides out, fold this up and sew that by hand and then sew probably this edge right here to the wrist of the cuff, potentially with a little bit of gathered lace. So I'm gonna go try that and see if uh, hopefully I didn't need to make this a trapezoid. Scratch that, I wasn't thinking. Cuffs have to be seamed up like this and then they can be folded because you need the cuff ends to meet. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sew this by machine. So I don't know about you, but I feel like there are some things that my brain just does not process. And one of those is how to calculate dealing with the thickness of things as like circles get smaller. As in like, you're making a cuff and you need to match a measurement and that thing that needs to match said measurement has within it thickness so therefore it winds up getting tighter than it actually is and no longer fits the thing you were supposed to match because that's what i've been dealing with here it's like really this is a cuff why are you making this so hard my brain doesn't compute it because i started with the measurement and i cut that measurement plus seam allowance here and this doesn't fit. So I've been working with a bunch of things to try to make it fit. So the first thing that I did, I guess 
First, before I even go into that, I did wind up originally doing the seam on here so that it would be kind of trapezoidal so that I went from a half inch seam allowance at like the edge of the cuff to a only the serging part so like a quarter inch seam allowance at the fold of the cuff to make it slightly larger at the top however then I went and tried to look at it on the sleeve and the inside was all squinched up the velvet and so therefore the sleeve wound up being even more squinched up within the velvet and it totally didn't work so I went back and I undid the outer portion of the seam, so from the fold to the edge, just on the outer side, which is the side with the fusibles interfacing in there. And I'm gonna wind up with this lovely burn in the velvet because of the stitch line, but I made it so that that was actually the same quarter inch seam allowance all the way on that side. And then it would taper in on the inside to the edge to a half inch seam allowance. And then again, I folded it all up, pinned it all up, tried it with the sleeve, and it still didn't fit. There was a lot less wrinkling on the inside of here, but this was still not fitting within it. So now I have gone back and I have made it so that the fold of the inside is actually way more. I added about a 3 8 inch to that fold, so it's folding about 7 8 inches inside right now. And basically I made it so that it would just cover the serging on the outside. So if you look in there, there's serging and this is gonna just cover it. And I'm going to stitch that down and then stitch the outer edge to the sleeve which miraculously mostly fits. There might be like the squidgiest bit of easing going on from the sleeve to the cuff, the outer rim, but by getting the inner portion out of the way, I'm no longer having that bulk in there making the circle itself smaller. Ugh, math. Don't get it. So that's the workaround that I figured out. Once I hand sew that, I can hand sew this. I may or may not add lace. I haven't decided on that point yet, but I think I will put the cuff on first and then decide if I want lace. I do also still need to do the neck bow and everything has to get done today because I'm taking pictures tomorrow. So the cuffs are getting close to being done as in the cuffs themselves are done. They just have to be stitched to the bodice now. And I did that little whip stitching right inside, like I said I was going to do. And then this is going to get stitched to the end of the sleeve right here. And I'm going to add a very narrow lace that I found in my stash in there as well, because I decided that was what looked best. A very little gathered white lace in my stash. So this is like super super cheapo stuff that I got somewhere but it's very small and I think it'll do well and then I also started working on the neck bow now I may have made my neck bow a little bit large so there's a possibility that I'm gonna make it smaller and it was a total experiment so I didn't film any of it and I apologize for that but honestly all this is is it was a square a well, slightly rectangle of velvet with the same of cotton organdy that this time I surged the cotton organdy instead of like interfacing. I surged that to it to give it a little bit of stiffness and then I started to sew the ends here together but I left a gap so that I could turn it because this was right sides together and then I moved this seam to the center, sewed these sides, again, right sides together, and then I turned it right side out through the gap in the middle right here. I believe I did a better explanation of this in one of my Cinderella videos, so I will link that video, assuming that that was true. I will link that video down in the description below. I think it was my last of the Cinderella project videos that I talked about how to make bows like this, because this is just a single layer bow. And now I'm going to make a little loop just a small piece of the velvet and that will go in the center right here like that but as you can tell this is a rather large bow so I mean they did like their large neck bows in the 1890s I don't think this is that overkill but I mean like it's a little overkill but I think I'm gonna run with it anyway and if it's terrible I'll change it later not gonna lie kind of in love with how this turned out. Looks just about perfect. Now I just have to hand sew it to the back of the collar. 
All right, so obviously I have it on. It is not quite done just in that I need to put the bars on the belt, but other than that, it's done. And then I'm going to go take pictures this evening, kind of like at golden hour after I do a gig that I have to go get ready for in just a minute. And I think the only thing that I'm like not entirely happy with is I think I do need padding here and I'll see if I can maybe put a sock in or something. I don't have time to add actual pads before we go take pictures. I doubt anyway, uh, but I, yeah, there's just wrinkling and sinking happening, happening right here that I'm not a super fan of, but the belt does look, I think, really cute. That bone in the center front really helps with the belt. And the one other thing that I'm doing right now and that I'm going to do for when I actually wear it is that I decided instead of the corset cover that I was wearing earlier that I would wear one of my 19 teens princess slips and that is because I was still seeing the bottom of my corset through the two skirt layers. I've got the petticoat and the skirt. Well, now I have the princess slip, the petticoat and the skirt. Princess slip also creates kind of a smoother line because it doesn't have buttons or anything. And I think that it's not quite showing. It was definitely showing before I put the outer skirt on. And that's funny because the outer skirt is pretty sheer. But now I think with that added layer that it's going to be okay. So that's all I have to do. I'm going to put these on probably after my gig right before I leave to go take pictures. And the next thing you will see is the final reveal.
So overall, I am honestly super happy with how this turned out. Obviously, it took me a lot longer than I had anticipated, but yeah, I am just loving the results. Like, I love the ruffly sleeves. I really love what the velvet adds to it. I think that is just, like, it just is that finishing polishing touch and I should be able to use this belt for that fall plaid outfit as well assuming that I decide I want a belt with that which I think I do so that'll be nice that it can do double duty for that and that project will be coming in after I do my fall like daily wear projects so I do have four fall or spooky season daily projects or daily wear type projects and they will be three different cotton dresses and then my spooky strawberry dress. So super excited for all of those projects and then we will be jumping back into the 1890s with the purple plaid silk one. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this entire series on my summer 1890s outfit. If you liked this video please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays but I post every day over on my Instagram so please go follow me on Instagram that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions and if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons Angela and Sharon. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!